වාණිජ විද්‍යා ගණිත කලා තාක්ෂණ වේදය විෂය ධාරාවන් වල සියලුම විෂයන් සඳහා විශ්ව විද්‍යාල කතිකාචාර්යවරුන් සහ රජයේ පාසල් වල ප්‍රවීණ ආචාර්ය මණ්ඩලයේ විසින් මෙහෙවනු ලබන දේශන නැන පවුර YouTube channel ඔස්සේ නැරඹිය හැක ඉදිරි දේශන දැන ගැනීම සඳහා නැන පවුර YouTube channel එක subscribe කරන්න දෙහි දූ දරුවන්ගේ අනාගත ජයග්‍රහණයට Hello everyone. Now we are going to start today's business class studies lecture. So I want to invite our Madam Sanjeevani. Hello, Madam. Hello. Thank you. All right, children. Good evening to everyone. Uh, I'll be discussing the seventh unit, money and financial institutions today. So we'll start the lesson. all right so uh, this is your seventh unit so we have been discussing uh, uh, first few units actually now this is the seventh one so this is known as money and financial institution uh, so you'll be uh, throughout this lesson you will be learning about money and the financial institutions right okay so we'll start now so the first thing that you need to know is money what money is right so how do you define money so that's the first thing that you need to know so if someone asks what money is there should be a definition for money you know so money is anything that is generally accepted right in exchange of goods and services now earlier the ancient you know uh, the system was the barter system so there they did have uh, the commodity just to you know uh, just to ex exchange right so they generally they exchange goods to goods right instead of a common commodity so there were some drawbacks of uh, money sorry uh, drawbacks of barter system so the money came because of that a solution for that right so money is something you know very useful and something very important okay right so then how do you define money anything that is generally accepted in exchange of goods and services right so that's money so now what are the requirement of money for exchange right so now there are certain requirements of money for exchange right so now here If I take this one minute, one minute, children. I'll share this again. Okay, requirement of money for exchange. So in the now, the first point that I have given here, it's in the past. the direct exchange of goods without the use of money was called barter system that's what i explained you now right so in the past the direct exchange of goods without the use of money that was the barter system right so various difficulties there were some drawbacks of barter system okay so the absence of double coincidence then uh, uh, exactly that you could not divide right you could not uh, store okay so there were so many drawbacks so then uh, therefore the need of common medium of exchange that was acceptable to all was felt right so everybody was feeling that we need something right so generally acceptable the medium of exchange was known as money came because of that okay then functions of money So now we'll see the functions. What are the functions? Now don't mix all these things, children. Right? So there are certain functions. There are certain, you know, characteristics that we are talking here. So that we are discussing here. Don't mix these things. Right? So first of all, what are the functions of money? Functions being a medium of exchange, being a standard of value for measurement, then acting as a store of value, acting as a deferred payment. these are the functions of money so i'll be discussing each and everything now right so later on we'll be discussing the characteristics of also so don't mix all these functions with the characteristics 
right so you need to study the function separately right now we'll see the functions what's the first one function being a medium of exchange right so that's a common characteristic sorry uh, the common uh, uh, definition right so the definition was uh, given based on this actually being a medium of exchange acting as the intermediary in the exchange of goods and services right so or else the price of goods and services is paid in terms of currency right when you purchase a book you pay 50 rupees right when you purchase a pen you pay uh, 25 or 30 rupees right so then that you pay in terms of uh, you know uh, currency so that's been a medium of exchange all right that's been a medium medium of exchange that's one thing that's one function okay then the next one acting as the means of measurement in measuring the value if you can measure the uh, good or the service right properly exactly that's another function right if you can exactly measure the value right so now it is use of money for the measurement of the value right so um, so that exactly you can say this this one is i mean this book is rupees 50 right exactly you can measure so this is known as the price children right so it facilitates accounting it becomes a unit of account so because of that because of the price only that it facilitates the accounting otherwise you can't do that no? right so now the example is setting the price of a pair of shoes right so that's 1999 right now exact measurement okay so that's the second function children okay acting as the means of measurement in measuring the value then we will see the next one acting as a store of value now you can store no right you can keep that you can store notes and coins and you can use it in future right so from your small age that you just as at present of some like you know people they have tills right you collect coins notes there in the till okay so that's because that money has that value right function store of value okay so you can use that in future then the next one acting as a deferred payment what do you mean by deferred payment right so you can ask someone like 100 rupees now for an example so then you can pay him or her later right in future so that because of this function that because of deferred payment function right an agreement can be made an agreement can be made regarding a future payment okay so that means the possibility of purchasing goods and services at present under the terms and condition to settle the payment in near future right so you are asking you know 100 you are buying you know from your nearby shop some goods for 1000 rupees and you are telling mudalali i'll pay you tomorrow so that because of this function deferred payment all right so that's another function now again we'll see the functions being a medium of exchange that the first function that we discussed second one acting as the means of measurement in measuring the value that's the next one then the third one acting as a store of value fourth one acting as a deferred payment now i told you that you have separate characteristics also for money now we'll see the characteristics of good currency right how do you say this currency is good so they, because there are certain characteristics all right so the first one having a general recognition so you can just recognize so this is 100 rupees this is 200 rupees sorry uh, 50 rupees this is a uh, one rupee coin that's one of the characteristics so one by one we'll discuss okay durability difficulty in imitation easy movability easy identifiability right ability to divide into small units that is divisibility so these are the characteristics of good currency so when there is a question to name and write the or state characteristics of good currency don't write the functions these are the common mistakes that the children do okay so don't write the functions for characteristics and for characteristics don't write functions okay so don't mix these two so now we'll take the first characteristic having a general recognition okay
what do you mean by having a general recognition now you can just check the note and you can see okay this is 100 rupees you can check 500 rupees and say that is 500 because generally recognize you know that uh, ability is there and the durability durability in the sense not only for one month that you'll be using the money so you can use that for a long period of time that's durable right and difficulty in imitation you can't imitate no you can't print at home no right you can't copy that and you can just use it uh, instead of uh, the real money no you can't do it because there are some security features right so difficulty in imitation is also a characteristic easy movability you can carry that and you can put all these things and you can go uh, into the purse or the wallet and you can go right so easy movability right and easy identifiability right you can just separately you can identify 100 rupees from 500 right and ability to divide into small units now if the uh, uh, shopkeeper is asking you know 150 rupees so you can separately give divide and give 150 rupees right if they're asking 1999 so you can count and you can exactly give that amount right that because of this characteristic divisibility exactly you can divide into small units right so now these are the characteristics of a good currency so what else what are the characteristics having a general recognition durability difficulty in imitation easy movability easy identifiability ability to divide into small units right so now you know the characteristics and the functions of money in a separate way now we'll see another part of it money can be categorized in the following manner so what is that currency you call it currency what is it notes and coins right issued uh, in order i mean uh, on the order of the financial authority are known as currencies right so currencies identified as valid money right it has 100 percent liquidity right you don't you know it doesn't take time to convert that into money no because it's money it's currency so liquidity is that okay so currency has 100 percent liquidity coins and notes then near money what do you mean by near money right nevertheless of having 100 percent liquidity as currency it doesn't have 100 percent liquidity as currency right because it takes time to convert into money okay so um, what are those things time deposits savings deposits right so these things you know uh, treasury bills commercial papers it takes time to convert that into cash no right so those are near money it doesn't have 100 percent liquidity okay right so when there is a question what are near money so you these are the examples that i have given here in my presentation time deposits saving deposits right money at bank right so those are near money then what is e-money e-money of course it's common to you all debit card credit card prepaid cards right so that is e-money right a money evolved as a result of information and digital technology right that's e-money then what are the, there are some facilities or the services available to uh, make these methods of card payment convenient now you will be having tech credit card debit card all these cards you might be having but if you don't have facilities to use those things so it's pointless right but there are some services or the facilities just to make these card payments easy right what are those facilities automatic teller machines ata so because atms are all over so you can just go and anytime you can withdraw money right oh, okay or oh, you can deposit money and automatic deposit machines are there and check deposit machines electronic fund transfer point of sale right eft pos the uh, machine that you swipe the card ah that is there then telebanking facilities internet banking online banking facilities are there television banking that is also there so these are the services or the facilities available to make the cards 
payment convenient, right? So when we give a question like this, just to write facilities available to make these card payments easier or the convenient, most of the students, they write the advantages of these ATM or e-cards, right? So that's not uh, the thing that we are expecting, right? Here, the services, which is there to facilitate these card payments. So if these services are not there, you will be not, you know, in a position to use those cards, no? Ah. So services are these services only that you need to write. All right. Okay. Now that's about money. Now we'll see the financial institutions in Sri Lanka. Right. So if now you can divide these financial institutions into several groups. Okay. So the first one is banking sector. Right. Under banking sector, central bank is there. So that's banks, a banker's bank, no central bank, all the other banks are under the central bank. Licensed commercial banks are there. Licensed specialized banks are there. So these three come under banking sector. Then there are other financial institutions which accept deposits, right? They are not banks actually, right? But they are financial institutions, but they accept deposits. What are they? Licensed finance companies, cooperative rural banks, thrift and credit cooperative societies, right? They are other financial institutions which accept deposits. They also take deposits. And also there are some specialized financial institutions. What are these specialized financial institutions? There are some specialized financial leasing companies, children. Primary dealers are there, share brokering companies, unit trust, market intermediaries, venture capital companies. These things come under specialized financial institutions, right? So all these things you need to know, okay? Not just that you need to categorize, but you need to know in detail what they are. Then contractual savings institution, that is another categorization. So under contractual savings institutions, you get insurance companies, uh, employee provident fund, employee trust fund, approved pension and provident fund, state service provident fund. All right. So these are the categorization of financial sector. All right. So what are the main headings that we categorize? Banking sector, other financial institutions, specialized financial institutions, contractual savings institutions. So then we'll see from the beginning, right? Banking sector, the first one is the central bank. Okay, so that's the main institute that perform its activities as an agent of the government, right? They do everything on behalf of the government. Okay, they issue securities on behalf of the government. They buy securities on behalf of the government. Okay, they regulate all these uh, financial institutions. Okay, so they implement the financial policies of the country. So that's the central bank. Then the next one is licensed commercial bank. So what are these licensed commercial banks? Now, licensed commercial banks, these are some of the financial institutions they maintain current accounts. Licensed commercial banks, they maintain current accounts and other saving accounts, right? And uh, there are many licensed commercial banks in Sri Lanka, right? They also under CBSL, Central Bank of Sri Lanka, right? And Monetary Board, okay? So then uh, there are some government sector commercial banks and private sector commercial banks. So what are government sector commercial banks? Bank of Ceylon, People's Bank, they come under government sector commercial bank, right? So what are private sector licensed commercial bank? Now you, that's common. Sampath Bank, Commercial Bank, PLC, Hat National, right? Bank, uh, uh, Ceylon, okay? So these things are private sector commercial banks. So this is about licensed commercial banks. Then what is licensed specialized banks? So they are special type of banks, right? So they, like, you know, uh, they has a license at the central bank as usual, like the other banks, 
right they undertake business activities as a specialized bank okay so the the speciality is that they are not authorized to operate current accounts right so but they have you know they have the authority to accept deposits for savings accounts and time deposits right but they can't have current accounts and as well as foreign exchange facilities okay so that's the difference between licensed commercial banks and licensed specialized bank get it properly okay licensed commercial banks they can do all these things like current account facilities uh, uh, savings foreign exchange all these things they can have but the licensed specialized banks they cannot have current account and foreign exchange facilities okay so some of the examples that i have given here national savings bank sri lanka savings a regional development bank state mortgage and investment bank so these are some of the examples for licensed specialized banks so clearly you need to know the difference between licensed commercial banks and licensed specialized banks children okay so now i gave the difference then the ways in which the licensed commercial banks contribute in business activities so how can these licensed commercial banks contribute they accept time and saving deposits right that's one way they provide loans right to entrepreneurs they underwrite of company shares right what do you mean by that so when they uh, uh, when the companies are selling shares if there are unsold shares these people they buy all those unsold shares providing leasing facilities providing management advisory services right so these are some of the you know uh, services or the things that done by licensed commercial banks then there is another one licensed finance companies now children now all these things uh, which comes under uh, the financial sector only that we are explaining right so first i took the banking sector now the licensed commercial banks licensed uh, uh, specialized banks right now licensed finance companies other uh, institutions that deposit uh, deposit uh, other institutions that de take deposits okay all right give me a minute children all right so then these are licensed finance companies so uh, licensed finance companies these are a special type of public companies that has that they they also have the uh, license from the central bank to operate right so uh, uh, and uh, the purpose of accepting time deposit and providing with the investment loan facilities based on those funds because they are provided and they are running with a fund okay so now these are the examples all right right children so these are licensed finance companies okay so now examples are uh, lb finance right uh, then the singhaputra finance then uh, singha finance okay these are some of the financial companies then we will see the next one activities of licensed finance companies sometimes you get this as well activities of licensed finance companies so what are the activities that they do they provide higher purchase facilities okay and they um, sell lands and properties you must have seen all these banners right they finance leasing they provide short term loans right so they invest in public state securities okay they accept time deposits as well so these are the activities of licensed finance companies now we'll see the cooperative rural banks 
right so i'll be explaining each and everything okay so what are these cooperative rural banks so these are an organizations they provide loans to its members right as one of its main activities so now sometimes you might get this as uh, for mcgs right what is the main activity of cooperative rural bank providing loans to its members okay and also they accept time and fixed deposits right that is from members and non members as well okay i think it's clear they provide loans to its members only right but when they takes uh, you know deposits they take from members and non members as well right so this is the banking sector of multi purpose cooperative sector okay so uh, for examples cooperative rural bank of maharagama and uh, sorry uh, yeah maharagama multi purpose cooperative society so these are some of the examples for cooperative rural banks then what are the activities of cooperative rural banks receive deposits now uh, some of these activities are there in the uh, in the definition as well okay so they receive deposits from members as well as non members they pawn activities they do some pawning activities right they maintain savings and fixed deposits they provide loan facilities to members for agriculture and manufacturing right they uh, popularize the cooperative lifestyle among rural people so these are the activities of cooperative rural banks then we will see sanasa another name given for sanasa is thrift and credit transaction cooperative societies sometimes they can use this term or else sanasa okay but you should know both so it's a special type of institution okay and it registered with the cooperative commissioner under the cooperatives act okay and they provide loan facilities to members by utilizing the deposit deposits obtained as savings right and membership shares while aiming at having at uh, having as its objectives okay so they encourage savings and provision of loans to members so they encourage those things right so normally they just go and deposit money there sanasa right all right so now examples nelum uh, kulama sanasa society attanagala sanasa society in your areas also there you must have seen there are sanasa societies okay so that's thrift and credit transaction cooperative society then what are the activities happening there in sanasa societies they operating marketing centers right so now if you have you know uh, people you know if they like to you know sell their things like you know small medium uh, uh, business bank so they will encourage right and they will have set a scene for them to sell their products okay and marketing of equipment in the field of activity of society right so now if you do if you involve in fisheries so then uh, they give so those equipment for a concessionary prices okay as fishing gear and uh, so on. okay and they accept deposits and they provide loans to its members right those are the activities that the sanasa societies perform then what are specialized leasing companies so they are the companies registered with the central bank so as usual all these things should be registered under central bank special but they are registered specially for leasing activities okay provision of finance facilities as per the request of businessmen right so then normally they they provide leasing facilities all right so now some of the examples are asset line leasing companies llc then uh, isuru leasing company okay so their main business activity uh, of these finance company is leasing okay then uh, the what is the main income of this uh, specialized leasing company so the lease that they collect lease no right so the leasing rent that is the main income okay then benefits gained by businessmen from leasing companies so suppose that you are a businessman right i always tell you all like you know if you do business studies when you do when you write answers you need to think that you have your own business 
Okay, so what are the benefits that you gain from a leasing company? Ability to use high value asset without paying the full uh, payment, right? Now, suppose it's uh, 50 million. Okay, so but you don't want to pay the 50 million at first, right? You can pay half and you can go for leasing installments, right? So the lease rent paid in respect of a lease in free from income tax, right? That is free from income tax as well. Okay, and uh, you can, you know, overcome any losses and capital losses that result through obsolences of machinery and other assets. And ability of earning higher returns without making large investment. Now, initially, if you have to pay a large amount of money to buy the asset, so that you have incur a lot of cost for that, no? Now, here, you don't want to pay, no? Right? So, then you need to pay a little amount and then rest at the later, no? So, because of that, you can get a higher return. Okay? So, these are the benefits gained by a businessman from a leasing company. Then, there is another one called primary dealers. Who are primary dealers, children? The market where government securities are marketed for the first time. Right? So, there is a market. Okay? So, it's not that ordinary market. They sell securities there. Okay? But they sell securities for the first time. Okay, first time earning money is done by the primary market. Okay, the firms that have been granted permission by the central bank to participate in the primary market are primary dealers. Now you will be learning different terms here. Okay, what is this primary market? Primary market is the market where government sells securities, right? For the first time. So uh, then uh, the firms that are involved, they are the firms that have been, uh, I mean, granted permission to do these activities, participate in the primary market, are primary dealers. Okay. The main responsibility of primary dealers, what is the main responsibility? To participate in the primary auctions, right? And also the secondary market. Okay, what do they do? They buy and they sell securities. Okay, so now see some of the examples. Capital Alliance Company selling cost rerun securities, Bank of Ceylon, Sampath Securities. These are some of the primary dealers. All right. Then the next one is share brokers. Who are share brokers? They are the organizations that act as mediators for buying and selling of shares, right? So they work as middlemen, okay? So they work as middlemen just to facilitate buying and selling of shares or debentures, right? In incorporated companies, they are share brokers. But for to do that, they need to buy a license, okay? From there, from the Securities and Exchange Commission. Right? So, if you want to be a share broker, you have to get the license from Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay? So, what are the examples? Asha People Security Company, Asia Securities Company, John Keels Share Broker. Okay? So, these are the share brokers. Then, what are the activities of share brokering companies? They accept and they buy or sell um, selling orders from investors, right? So they're accepting buying and selling orders from investors. Opening of accounts in the central depository system on behalf of investors. If I want to buy shares from a share market, I just can't go and buy that, no. I need to have an account, right? So I need to open an account where the central depository system. So the share brokers, they do on behalf of us. Okay, then advising investors about making investment. When you go to the share market, you can't, you know, you don't know, head or tail. But the share brokers are there to advise you, right? So you can contact them and you can ask, you know, what is the most uh, uh, higher return selling shares, right? So you get the information. What is the best uh, uh, company to sell uh, by shares? Okay, so you get information from these share brokering companies. Then assuring the highest return to investors through market analysis. So they analyze the market they, because 24 hours they are there. Okay. So they analyze the market and they 
tell you what to do assist with the listing of companies right so registering uh, companies you know listing of companies so they assist with listing of companies assist in the public limited companies in generating of capital okay then these are the activities of share brokering companies then unit trust what is unit trust children right so before i you know explain this i'll just in a simple term i'll tell you in this way right so you have friends right you get together you and your friends they get together and you all you know contribute you put uh, 100000 your friend put 100000 and likewise five or four six or uh, seven or group of friends they contribute right so each and every one they put 100000 or 50000 or whatever the amount right then you have a fund okay then you don't know what to do you don't know you because you all don't know no so you you don't know why we are to invest you don't know whether it's worth enough to buy shares you don't know whether worth enough to uh, have a fixed deposit okay so you consult a person right you consult a person and you just tell him here we don't know this can you just invest on behalf of us so he does that okay he invest in several several you know he invest uh, in uh, shares he uh, buys lands he uh, buys uh, whatever like you know they invest okay so the return that they get from several uh, investment portfolios right so then they put again to the fund and they just divide that they among themselves that is unit trust children right even though there are so many hard terms that come under this so that's the main thing happening there in unit trust okay so now here it says a unit tr trust is an investment fund okay that has been raised through the sale of units to investors okay the funds collected are deposited in a, in an investment portfolio right by professional fund managers i told you now you get the consultation from a person no that's the fund manager okay the return generated are distributed among the investors okay according to the unit price that you have invested right so that's unit trust children so there are parties there are three parties unit trustee right that you all so you all are the people who have contributed fund management uh, uh, companies right so unit holders or investors right so these are the three uh, parties now there is a connection between these parties okay i'll show you one minute i'll show you the connection One minute. I'll open that and show you all. It's a small diagram. Okay, got it. All right. hope you can see right so this is the connection children now here this is the fund right i told you now you need holders or investors that is that's you y'all right i told you now y'all get together group of people that they get together and that is you need holders okay so they invest now this is the fund all right so now you all don't know the fund now you have but you don't know what to do so you are consulting a fund management company right so they uh, the fund management company is doing these things investing in different portfolio on behalf of you so what the fund management does 
investing in shares debentures state securities commercial papers right so that's known as investment portfolio all right so unit holders are there they are the investors they have a fund so they consult fund management company the fund management company is investing in different portfolio this is the connection okay so now these are some of the examples there are some of the unit trustees uh, normal trust fund c bank unit trust Ceylon uh, Savings Fund. So, uh, who are the fund management companies? National Asset Management Company, the Unit Trust Management Private Company, Ceylon Asset Management Company. Right. So, these are some of the examples. Okay. So, now hope I hope that you have got the connection about Unit Trust, Unit Trustee, and the fund management company. Okay. So, just. in a pra practical way if you can just get so that's uh, easy children i think it's wrong <coughs> wait okay so that's a connection between uh, parties of this unit trust now returns from investment in unit trust so what you will you get right now so you are now you are investing in unit trust okay so what is the return that you'll get you reduce the risk because it's the risk diversification right you don't invest only in shares no you don't invest only in lands no right you diversify the risk because there are several investment methods that you invested in right so you can diverse diversify what do you mean by that so from uh, investing in shares you might get a profit but investing in a land you might get a loss but that can be covered up from the uh, other uh, other investment method so that's risk diversification okay possibility of obtaining the services of professional managers for investment management all right so these are the returns all right so the next one is market intermediaries so who are market intermediaries while underwriters investment managers and marginal suppliers are included in this they act as mediators in the sale of financial instruments what do they do their seller is there buyer is there and you facilitate okay you just you know as mediators you just sell or buy financial securities okay so for these services the buyer and the seller of the financial instrument is leave the service charge okay right then underwriters so who are underwriters so i explained this earlier also a bit in the sale of securities to the public by a public limited company so public limited company they can sell securities or uh, shares to the general public no the organization that contracts to pay and purchase any unsold ones right unsold securities right within the given period is known as underwriters if i am the i'm doing underwriting so i can buy unsold securities so that's my duty that they are underwriters all right so then who are investment managers investment managers provide various services during the issue of securities to the public what are they they issue investment application try to issue uh, shares they accept applications allocation of securities to the investors the financial management about the issues advertising activities these are the services provided by investment managers then marginal suppliers who are marginal suppliers marginal suppliers are the organizations involved in debt collecting on behalf of the supplier now suppose that i have given uh, i have sold my goods on credit right 
So I have sold goods to company A, company B, company C, right? But I don't have time. I just I, I, I might be having a lot of work, business work. So I don't have time to go and collect money, right? Debt that they need to pay, right? But I can appoint some people to do that. So they are marginal suppliers, right? On behalf of me, they go and collect it. They, that is debt factory. Okay, so they get a factory fee for that. They are marginal suppliers, right? Now, suppose practically just think that you have uh, uh, given money uh, or you have sold something for several people, but they have to pay you, but they have not paid yet, right? But you don't have time. So you are asking your friend, can you please go and ask money and come from those two people? Right, that they, the friend is known as marginal supplier. Right, he does that on behalf of you. That part is known as debt factory. Okay, so they are marginal suppliers. Then, what is venture capital company? So, these are the companies specialized in meeting the capital requirement of business of new entrepreneurs. So, if you are an, are an entrepreneur, a new one, Right? They provide you, they help you to provide capital requirement. Right? So they provide funds for the commencement of businesses. Okay, so if you want to expand the business, the existing business for that, also they'll help you. Okay, so they are venture capital companies. Right? And in addition to the you, you know, they do underwriting and loan syndication as well. But they don't, you know, have those uh, current account or they don't have these uh, uh, savings accounts. Venture capital companies, their main requirement is to, you know, provide uh, loans or provide help entrepreneurs, new entrepreneurs, okay, for the commencement or for the expansion of businesses. <coughs> Sorry. Then insurance companies. There's nothing new for me to explain about insurance companies. Insurance companies are the institutions involved in raising funds by issuing uh, various insurance policies, right? So our next lesson is insurance, right? So you will be learning about insurance in that lesson in detail and about their policies, right? So various insurance companies, they have various insurance policies, right? From that, so they just, you know, uh, that's their business actually, okay? They perform financial intermediary services, right, lending in the financial market, right, and market investments, okay, so that they are insurance companies. So what are the examples? Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation, Selinko Insurance, Jana Shakti Insurance, so they are insurance companies, okay. Right, so the next one, provident and pension funds. Provident and pension funds. So there are pension funds and provident funds administrated by state sector management and as well as private sector management, right? So now funds under state management, what comes under the government? Employee trust funds, okay? state service provident fund, right? So then, private sector management, that is EPF, employee provident fund. For accounting, you will be learning how much from the employer, how much from the employee, right? That's That comes under private sector, that is EPF. Now we'll come to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. So what is the Central Bank? I told you in a brief manner, the Central Bank is banker's bank. Right, so the central bank, I have given a small description about central bank here. So that was established on 28th August 1950. Okay, so uh, who was the first founder, governor? Mr. John Exter, right? That also you should know, right? Its organization of affairs is carried out by a monetary board. Okay, so it consists five persons, right? Who are they? Governor of the central bank. There are five people, okay, governor of the central bank, secretary of the finance ministry, 
right? And three other appointee members, right? All together five. What are the main objectives of the central bank? There are objectives, no? You also have objectives. The uh, organizations also have objectives. So the central bank has objectives. First one, maintain economic and price stability, right? Something that we don't experience here in Sri Lanka, right? Maintain economic and price stability. So the maintenance or protection of the value of the domestic currency is price stability. No inflation, no deflation, right? So through this, the economy is expected to be maintained and uh, avoid inflation and deflation situation, right? So you know, high inflation is also not good. High uh, deflation is also not good. So stabilized economic system is accepted, okay? Right. Then what's the second one? Now, once again, the, what's, what's the first thing? Maintain economic and price stability. That price stability, that's the main, one of the main objectives. What's the second one? Maintain the stability of the financial system. Right now, I explained, you know, the financial system, right? Financial system comprises of banking sector, financial uh, uh, institutions, other financial institutions, right? Likewise, that's a financial system. Right? So maintaining the stability of the financial system is the second one. Right? The ability of economy to sustain itself is known as the stability of financial system. Right? The creation of security in the financial system uh, makes it possible to identify and minimize any threats. Okay? So the second objective in the central bank is to maintain the stability of the financial system. Right. Now, those are the main objectives to children and there are main activities also of the central bank. Right. Don't mix. Main objectives are separately. Activities are separately. Now, what are the activities of the central bank? Manipulation of finance policies. Manipulation of exchange ratio policies. Right. They manage Sri Lanka's official foreign reserves also. Right, they issue and they distribute currency. Okay, and they work as the supervisor of banks and non banking institutions. Okay, and working as the financial agent and banker and the economic advisor as well. Right, to the to whom to the government, and they provide facilities to maintain central bank settlement uh, uh, accounts of the commercial banks and primary traders. Okay, and clearance and settlements. They do that. They facilitate that. So they are the main activities of the central bank. So separately, you need to know the objectives, two objectives. And the other things are main activities. Then the agency activity is also there, right? So main objectives, now I explained you. Then main activities are these. And there are agency activities. Right, so there are so many things that you have to learn here inside this lesson. Okay, throughout the lesson, there are so many important things that some anything that you cannot, uh, you know, set aside. Right, so what are agency activities? Management of state loans. So that you can't write that management of state loan as a main activity that comes under agency activity. Foreign exchange control. Work as the primary institution. Right and management of employee provident fund, right? That is also done. So these are agency activities of the central bank. Then how the activities of the central bank are supportive uh, to the success of business, right? So now to make it success, right? There are certain activities should be there. No? What? Sri Lanka interbank payment system. <coughs> Sorry. Slips. Okay, this, what is this? This system with the use of computers is used for the settlement of interbank transaction. You know, from bank to bank, right, transactions. So this interbank payment system that was carried out by the central bank has been entrusted to Lanka Clear, right? So that is owned jointly by the central bank and commercial banks, right? That is Sri Lanka interbank payment system. That's happening. Right. So uh, that now you need to know that is like, you know, owned jointly owned by the central bank and commercial banks. 
then what are the clearing activities that are done by the Sri Lanka clear exchange of checks and bank draft right and they calculate the net balances they keep the central bank and other banks informed about these net balances now they will get the net balances and then after that they will inform the central bank and other banks about these net balances right and they introduce a common card children so that is known as lanka pay okay <coughs> so the next one swift universal interbank financial uh, electronic communication network so it's a network that embraces financial market across the world okay so worldwide one based on the latest technology so this is known as swift right so international money transfers and all that you can do through this swift then rtgs real time gross settlement system it is also a computer system children okay that has been set up using modern technology right so then uh, uh, it says uh, and standardized for 130 the settlement of high value transfers now remember real time gross settlement that is they are for high value transfers among banks right within sri lanka without any time delays you can do it okay so now remember rtgs or which is real time gross settlement system it is there for high value transfers within banks within sri lanka okay right then ssds there is another thing called ssds scriptless securities depository system right so what is this system it is used to uh, effect paperless transaction right when buying and selling securities instead of printed papers right so they facilitate that right so this avoid the risk of investors in safe keeping and selling of printed securities okay right then there are two main services rendered by commercial banks right what are those two services rendered by commercial banks services related to deposit now the central bank is over okay now we have discussed about central bank main objectives uh, main activities agency activities now we will come to commercial banks what are two main services rendered by commercial banks services related to deposits right so current account that means demand deposits savings account fixed deposits right then what are the benefits that can uh, uh, gained by the businessman by having a current account now suppose you have a current account what are the benefits that you will gain you can do the payments through checks right and you can obtain remittance facilities right you can make uh, payments on standing order right then uh, overdraft facilities even though you don't have the uh, remaining balance right you can just Uh, uh, issue checks above that even above the balance ability to obtain report of the transaction bank statement you can get so these are the benefits that you will receive if you have a bank current account then lending related facilities what are lending related facilities so overdraft okay <coughs> sorry what is overdraft now i explain you in a brief manner no? a bank overdraft is a specific approval granted by the commercial banks to a current account holder to issue checks up to a specified value over the above the credit balance available you might be having 50000 but you have issued a check 100000 right so if they have allowed you to issue that is issue that check right 100000 that is overdraft facility provided by the bank when an overdraft facility has been granted by the bank the bank will honor checks drawn by the account holder up to a certain limit okay so and there are two parts also right permanent overdraft facilities temporary overdraft facilities so permanently you can get that facility okay you need to pay uh, some amount for that temporary overdraft facility also there are so in a sudden you know uh, consequences that you can get that facility so these are two types of overdraft facilities then two types of bank loans now there are two types of bank loans business loans and consumer loans 
business loans you obtain for your business for expansion or just to buy your business uh, the uh, business building okay consumer loans just for your personal individuals right right uh, for for the students or for housing or whatever that's consumer loans <coughs> sorry then other services provided by the com commercial bank so what are the other services provided by the commercial banks agency services right so they represent as an agent right so like purchase sales of securities they put a standing order into effect payment of water bills and electricity bills that commercial banks they do that on behalf of you no so that is an agency service then leasing services they do since that we have discussed about leasing i'm not going to explain again e banking right you can stay at home and you can just log in and you can do the payments right home banking telebanking facilities are there then pawning services you can keep your jewelry right and you mortgage your jewelry and you can or securities and you can just uh, get some amount of money safety locker facilities if you have some valuables jewelry or deeds you can just you know have a safe uh, safety locker right you can pay and you can take that and you can just keep all these things in a safe manner then credit card services they issue visa card master cards american express cards right so credit card facility is also provided by them money remittance activities that means collection of money due to the account holder on the on, on behalf of him right so sending money to an individual who lives abroad or getting money from them right so that is remittance activities an issue of travelers checks i don't think that is happening nowadays right it's a special type of check that is issued by the local and foreign travelers right so that enable them to carry out their various transactions uh, easily and safely that's travelers checks okay automatic banking services so it's an electronic method of fund exchanging right so uh, that is available to bank account holder who can enjoy a lot of facilities okay so what are the advantages to customers because of automatic banking services withdrawal of cash any time deposit cash in the account transferring funds ability to check the balance in the account availability of bill payments right so these are facile advantages to customers by having atms then advantages to the bankers because of automatic banking service cost reduction so they don't want to print those you know forms withdrawal forms or whatever these uh, stationery reduction in the rush at the bank right increase in accuracy because when you it comes to fill uh, the forms here you know you make mistakes right you can reduce those uh, errors then increase in banking service will result in increased profit okay so now most of the people that they use this uh, automatic banking services right so you can increase uh, the profit also so issuing of letter of credit right so letter of credit so uh, i'll be discussing in detail in home trade and foreign trade okay so now here i'll tell you letter of credit is a confirmation issued by the importers bank to the exporters bank right so that they will issue the letter of credit and they will confirm the payment okay that's letter of credit that also down the bank uh, the duty of a bank other services just as insurance right by providing medical services uh, installation of atm machines in a higher populated areas right so installation of atm machines uh, that are specially meant to accept cash and check deposits right there are some other services also all right so that's about banks now okay we have discussed about central bank commercial bank now something very important checks okay so what's this a check it can be introduced as the written order right written order issued by a bank current account holder so who is the current account holder drawer you need to know the terms children right to the commercial bank so the bank is known as drawee right current account holder is drawer 
bank commercial bank is drawing asking to pay a some amount of money which is stated on the check to a person named there that person is payee right that's the definition of a check right so in this definition all these three parties are mentioned who are the parties drawer that's the current account holder drawee the commercial bank payee the person named on the check right these are the three main parties then basic characteristics of check what are the characteristics of a check date is there the name of the bank and branch payee's name right the term o bearer i'll be i'll be explaining all these things okay the volume of the check in words and figures as well the word pay and drawer signature there is magnetic ink character recognition strip right so it contains now sometimes they ask what it contains right so this this uh, uh, magnetic ink character recognition strip contains check number bank reference number bank branch number account number that is the order okay and there is a check counter foil also counter foil where which is remaining there when you issue the check right so that you put all the details when you issue right so that's the evidence that you have okay right so now here that i have given a, a sample of a check right so it uh, it says everything so you just go through right so just i just wanted to wait i'll show you now bank name the pay now amount in word right so currency symbol rupees the date amount uh, here also you need to write okay then uh, now here this is the magnet magnetic uh, strip so these are the numbers that i explained you that comes all right okay then two types of checks there are mainly two types children bearer check and order check okay so now we'll see what bearer check is first this is a check where the printed notation o oh, bearer has not been cancelled right when you just check a, uh, when you just uh, go through a check if the term o oh, bearer is not cut off or cancelled that is known as a bearer check right so in the absence of an endorsement this check can be assigned to another person by merely handing it over right so to a great extent it is similar to carrying out a transaction using currency notes right so now remember bearer what is bearer check o oh, bearer is not has been cancelled right it has not been cancelled so that is bearer check now see this is an example of a bearer check just check it now see pay roy right so o bearer is there so that means anyone who is carrying this check also can get the money okay because this has not been cut off no so if this has not this this has been cut off that means only this person can get the money all right so this is a sample of a bearer check right then the next one is order check what's order check this is a check where o bearer has been struck off right so in the place of o bearer that has been cut off and instead of that order has been mentioned right so when a check like this is being assigned to a person it is necessary to be endorsed right so what is endorsement i'll be explaining that again right uh, so endorsement is that you write your name as you have you know written at the front the same as it is you write reverse side of the check is known as endorsement so there is a higher safety level in an order check rather than bearer check okay so if there is a question which is safer order check or a bearer check order check is safer then this is an order check children okay hope you can see right so instead of uh, uh, bearer now they have cut that off and instead of that they have written order 
okay so obeyara they have cut off obeyara instead of that they have written order right so then what are the facts that has to be taken into consideration when drawing a check now suppose that you are going to write a check so what are the things that you need to consider indeletable ink should be used right and the relevant details should be mentioned on the counterfoil as well okay so you know what counterfoil is so even in the counterfoil you have to mention all the details any errors if there is an error what you should do struck off with a single line right and then you need to put your full signature and the check should be written using only one language one single or one english no the drawer signature should be made as per the specimen given to the bank now you you are giving your signature to the bank no it has to be the same as that attention should be paid to the date placed on the check right and uh, the signature of drawer should not be placed on a blank check you need to check whether the uh, check has written properly then we'll see what crossing the check is children what is crossing drawing two parallel lines across the face of a check right or state in the name of a commercial bank is known as crossing a check so while any person can make crossing on a check it is only the drawer can make such crossing cancel or invalid anyone can cross a check but who can cancel that drawer then the necessity to cross a check why do you think crossing is necessary children because it gives an additional safety right and it ensures that the payee stated on a check will receive the same value right and to prevent paying to the check at the bank counter right if you have crossed the check they will not pay you from the bank counter you need to deposit that okay right now there are two types of crossing general crossing and special crossing So what is general crossing? Drawing two parallel lines across the face of a check, with or without any statement. Now see some. Now here the first one, no statements, only two lines. Second one, they have written not negotiable. Third one, account pay only. Fourth one, rupees five hundred only. Right? These are the terms that you can use in general crossing. What is special crossing? state in the name of a commercial bank with or without the parallel line now without parallel lines also you can just write bank of siloam name of a bank or else with parallel lines you can write name of a bank if they have mentioned a name of a bank that is a special crossing if they have not mentioned a bank of uh, say a uh, name of a bank that means it's general crossing okay so you can write account pay only but along with that you can see the payables bank so that means it comes under special crossing then these are the terms that we have used to under general crossing not negotiable what do you mean by not negotiable so yeah, that means such a check can be endorsed and transferred and that when such a transfer take place the transferee does not get a higher or better right than the transferor right so if you have uh, uh, got a stolen check you also will be guilty right you will not get a better right than the transferor right so you also will be the get you also will get the same title right so when you get a check with this notation you have to be very careful okay so what's account pay only so that means the check should be deposited in an account bear in the payee's name right so this notation limits the check being transferred to another person only that account uh, the name of that person will get that right that will limit uh, the transfer because you can now suppose that you have to pay me so you are giving me a check so i need to pay that another person so i can transfer that check to that person so account pay only limit those transfers then only up to 5000 so if this notation is there that will limit up to a maximum amount okay so those those are the notations that you will get now endorsement of a check now i told you endorsement writing the name of the payee 
on the reverse side of the check exactly as it is stated on the face of a check right how how you have written on the face of the check the same way right in the name right at the back of the check is known as endorsement okay instances where the endorsement is necessary why do you think endorsement is necessary there right when pay deposit the check now suppose that you have a check and if you want to check uh, deposit the check so they ask you to uh, uh, turn it to the other side and to write your name and sign no ah so remember children signing is not no endorsement it is not endorsement some students they make a mistake right when we ask what is endorsement they they write signing no write in the name as it is okay so that is endorsement so when the pay deposit the check you endorse if it is an order check so if you want to transfer them then you endorse right so when a check uh, sorry when a check without crossing is presented to the bank uh, then for in cashing also you need to endorse now there are certain types of endorsement children blank endorsement so that means pay right his name at the back of the check right now see k sara so the sara is the pay he write uh, she writes her name right at the back of a check that is blank endorsement then special endorsement so what is special endorsement it is done by stating that to pay for a particular person or his order right so these type of checks can be transferred now so here this is but they have uh, written in, uh, i mean the reverse side pay taranga or his order okay that's special endorsement then restrictive endorsement they are restricting okay they these type of checks cannot be transferred this is a safer than other endorsement children pay only to taranga right sara says only pay to taranga so that is restrictive endorsement okay so you get blank endorsement special endorsement and restrictive endorsement then dishonoring a check right where and i mean uh, what are the instances where that you dishonor the check uh, before that you need to know what dishonoring no? what is dishonoring when a bank rejects the payment for a check that is dishonoring okay so what are the instances where check may be dishonored when you don't have money right that point blankly so that means insufficient funds in the account where the drawer stops payment right where the drawer becomes bankrupt where the drawer dies and this is intimated to the bank right when there is a court order garnish order right and because of an error in writing the check or where the account has been closed so these are the instances where a check may be dishonored then children that's about checks so this check part is something very important right so if you missed something just uh, i prefer if you can just you know uh, check my video again and then just learn these things right then children e money so what do you mean by e money the electronic money okay so electronically if you exchange cash or the uh, cash ex exchange through a computer network so that's e money so what are the types of e money credit cards debit cards prepaid cards smart cards microchips those are types of electronic money right so credit cards of course now you know right so that's most popular cards now right so they are issued by the commercial banks but the most important thing is you don't need a bank account to obtain a credit card okay but whereas if you take the debit card you need a savings account or the account that the bank right so you need to write the differences also between debit and credit cards children okay now see now these are some of the examples that i have given c bank visa issued by bank of ceylon people's visa people's bank mastercard ceylon visa right these are type of the uh, cre uh, credit cards okay then what are the advantages and disadvantages uh, now first of all we will see advantages to the customer by having this having an account is not requirement no i told you that is an advantages that is one of the advantages 
an interest free loan for a given period right if you can pay during that period no interest right cash can be obtained through atm if you need right so you can get bonuses uh, bonus points discounts then what are the disadvantages you have to pay a penalty for late payment right and um, uh, sometimes most of some of the outlets are not accepting credit cards that is a disadvantage so what are the advantages to the businessman certainty that money will be received you know that you are sure that you will receive that money increase in profit also because when you just advertise that you are accepting debt credit card so advertisement okay receiving free publicity then disadvantage is what commission you need to pay a commission to the bank no right and then you need to install a special machine okay so these are the disadvantages so if you take the debit card an account holder can use this card to settle his shopping bill right so debit card you need to have a savings account right or the account so you can just you know use the card up to the amount that you are maintaining in the account not above that right so what are the advantages that you as customers that you will gain using the debit card for transaction interest is not payable right so transaction is completed at the same time right you don't want to you know have an alert and you know to pay before the due date no cash withdrawals can be done through atm so these are the advantages so disadvantages it is necessary to have an account the value of transaction is limited right up to the balance available you can't go maximum right then prepay you know the most you know examples are telephone cards travel passes right so obtained by making payments in advance okay so it is convenient protective so right so that can be used instead of paying in cash or by check right so even when you don't have a, an account you can use this card so smart what is smart card so it is integrated circuit card children okay it's kind of a chip right so uh, it specifies some amount of money right that value is there in the card so once a transaction is completed so uh, using this card the value of the transaction is debited to your account right and and the balance is reduced okay right this is smart card then now we will see the characteristics this is a face of uh, a, a credit card actually right so you need to know the uh, actually you need to know what comes there at the front right reverse side what are the things that you can see right so front side what you can see reverse side what you can see right and now here now you can see this is the chip right and uh, this is the number okay card holder's name right magnetic strip is here right this is the snake signature right we are the card holder signature here that you put here uh, the cvc or cvv is located here all right and uh, now the front side i think it here i think it is not given here but you can see the image of a dove right that pigeon right that also can be see can be seen there in the front side of a credit card all right so that also you need to know children then parties involved in the settlement of electronic transaction who are the parties card holder right then that is an organization which issues these cards the trader or the seller credit card association visa master american express right so these are credit card associations so these are the parties involved in the settlement of electronic transaction then what are the advantages in making transaction with these electronic cards cost of transaction you can minimize right then uh, assuring the safety you don't want to carry uh, the money you know everywhere ability to make transaction for 24 hours in the day convenience of payment also right and various benefits being entitled um, you can you know there are, there are so many promotions for children so you get some from hotels some other promotions then ability to use overseas transactions as well 
Okay, so these are the advantages that you gain. Then we'll see the disadvantages, right? Not only advantages, there are disadvantages as well. So what are the disadvantages? Having to bear the cost of interest. Now suppose that you delay payment, so you need to pay a penalty, you know, right? And possibility of committing uh, fraudulent deeds, right? Frauds can happen. Addiction, sometimes they can steal your PIN number, so there are so many issues to children. Addiction to an unnecessary consumption. When you have the credit card or the debit card, so you don't really need that. By looking at that, you can you feel to buy that also, right? So if you don't have that card, if you have money, right? Or if you have only like, you know, 50,000, you will only buy up to 50,000 no, because you know you don't have. But if you have that card, okay, you feel to buy that and this. And because even though it's not necessary, you feel to buy. Then interruptions to transactions due to technical defects, right? So inability and lack of knowledge for all customers. Sometimes some people still they don't know to use it, right? So these are disadvantages, all right? So that's the end of the lesson, children, okay? I know it's quite a you know, lengthy lesson, right? But that's something very important, not a single thing that you can set aside and because everything is important here, right? So later on, we'll discuss past paper questions the way that we have done last week. I think uh, for entrepreneurship and small, medium business, we, ex I mean, we did some past paper questions as well. So you got an idea the way that they ask, right? So when you just, I'll do later on, so, Ask paper questions based on money and financial institutions. You can see quite a lot that they ask right from this area, right? So I think that you have uh, got the got the idea about money and financial institution. So if you missed the lessons, you can just go through you know previous slides, previous uh, sorry videos, and uh, you can uh, you know study from that. Right, so this the help that we do for y'all. Right, so from the beginning up to now, from the first lesson to seventh lesson that we have done. So you can just check those things and you can learn through that. Right, so if there's anything, I think uh, you can free to ask. Right, you can send the questions through chat box or you can just comment there in the video itself so that I will uh, just answer that in my next session. All right, children, so, okay, right. Uh, then I'll stop the session. Thank you for joining. Have a nice day.